in in the heart of Hollywood, California, that is. Hooray for Hollywood presents June Kane Miller. Thank you for that. Okay. We're going to, we have an exciting topic today. Today we're going to be discussing homosexuality and religion. Uh, and can a gay be truly religious? Now, some say they can and some say they can't. And is there a middle ground? The gays ask the straight community to be tolerant of them and their beliefs, and the fundamentalist community wants to save the gays from their heathen, heathen lifestyle. When we return, I guarantee you, we will get some opinions. Let's hope, let's hope we get some answers. Stay with us. As I said, we are t discussing today homosexuality and religion. And in order to do that, uh, we have four guests with us today. And the first is Wayne Christensen. And Wayne is a Protestant minister on staff at Cedar sinai right? That's right. Yeah. Next to Wayne, we have Reverend Brad Anderson with the First Metro Community Church in North Hollywood. It's West Hollywood. Is it West Hollywood? Yeah. Yes. Have to get you somebody for That's that. Right. West Hollywood. There isn't a North Hollywood, is there? Yes, there is. Okay, and then we have, next to Brad, the Reverend Andy Kamiski. And Andy is with Desert Stream. What is Desert Stream? Desert, Desert Stream. Stream Ministries is within the Vineyard Christian Fellowship where I'm a pastor, but Desert Stream is specifically geared toward people coming out of homosexuality into wholeness in Christ. Okay. It's a specific ministry for that. Okay, you'll explain that a little yes. later, right? And Andy is a Reformed gay. Right? Reform. That's one okay. way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then finally, as I said, we might even get some answers. When I went out on the break, I said, hopefully we'll get some answers. And with us today is the answer man, and that's Reverend and Professor Walter Martin, a radio evangelist. And you also have a ministry, do you not? Yes, I'm a professor at the Simon Greenleaf School of Law and director of Christian Research Institute Busy in man, El Toro. Right. Okay, um, you have said, I read in your bio that... Uh, Groups that pose a constant threat to evangelism are, for example, the Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, Christian Science, the Unity School of Christianity, Religious Science, Herbert Armstrong's Worldwide Church of God, Scientology, and the Unification Church, among many, many others, right? So I guess I can safely assume that uh, the God-fearing and patriotic Americans belonging to those religions are, are a threat that we, uh, are, if they're a threat to our society, then gays must really be a threat, am I right? Uh, First, let's get the record straight. The Christian Church categorized those people before I did. I'm a professor of comparative religions. I studied them. I wrote on them. I didn't make the categories. The Christian Church categorized Jehovah's Witnesses of Mormonism a century ago uh, as cults. As far as the gays are concerned... Wait a minute. Say that again. Do that for me again. Sure. Okay. The Christian Church, Protestant, Catholic, and Orthodox, classified Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, Christian Science, Unity... Uh, almost a century ago as non-Christian cults. I didn't make the classification. I just wrote a book called The Kingdom of the Cults, surveying all of the material on the subject. Uh, so far as... Uh, okay, but not to interrupt, but that is a show, and I'm inviting you back personally to get into a discussion with some representatives from those groups. Well, I'm sure we'll my have a good time. Okay, and I think that's an, an important show for right. all of the world to hear. Right. Um, my statement to you... Um, and I guess it's posed really in the form of a question, is that if those people are a threat, what must you think then of the gay community and a gay? Can a gay honestly stand up and say or avow that they believe in God and or Jesus Christ or anyone for that matter? Gays can be religious. There are gays that are Christians. I'm speaking now from the perspective of Christianity. There are gays who are Christians, but they're non-practicing just as there are adulterers and fornicators who are Christians, but they're not practicing. So a gay can be a Christian if they're not practicing immorality. Okay. What I think we'll do, um, and thank you for that answer, uh, what I think we'll do here is um, if Kevin will please uh, bring up the scriptures. We, I took some scriptures from the Bible um, that I want everyone to address themselves to. And for those of you um, here on the panel that can't see, you people in the studio may want to look at the monitor. And what I will do is I will read them as we show them on screen for the people at home. So why don't we bring them up now and uh, take a look at them. And can you, um, Reverend Martin, can you other clergy say it? Okay, first we have Romans 127. And likewise, also the men 
leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. Which was neat, actually, it should be. Okay, that's Romans 1.27. I will get comments after we go through all of these. Then we have 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Okay? That was 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Now we have from the Old Testament, Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be put upon them. Okay, now, we did a show last week on the issue of AIDS and homosexuals. This issue came up in that show. I gave my viewing audience, as well as my in-studio audience, my word that we would follow up because it was requested. I got so many phone calls asking that we do this topic. And Wayne was with us that day, and everyone wanted to do this topic. I said, fine. The people that approached me and asked to be participants are here. Those scriptures are taken out of the Bible, and I think that will be the basis for this show. So what I will do is now throw it open to any one of you that want to either answer those or for the gays in the audience. If there are scriptures of which I am not aware or the general public is not aware that says, and not to be treated lightly, but says it's okay for he in it and he in it and she in it and she in it and me in it and me in it, okay? Then tell me where those scriptures are. To address those particular verses, let's say, of Paul, it's important to acknowledge that Paul is Jewish. And uh, the issue for Paul in terms of our relationship to God is that of faith. He begins this whole section here, uh, beginning with uh, Romans 1, 17, that we're justified by our faith. And then he goes on to talk about idolatry, when God is not God. So for all of those things listed there in Romans, God is not God. Fornicating is more important than God is. Adultery is more important than, uh, than uh, God is. And within, uh, whether homosexual or heterosexual, promiscuity, when God is not God, that is what Paul's addressing. Now, a healthy, nurturing, mature relationship between people of the same sex is not really addressed in the Bible. Certainly not in the Old Testament. Those folks are unclean. They would have no access to it. Now, just to bring it back to Jesus, nowhere in the written record does Jesus uh, address homosexuality and say that, you know, this is an uh, unacceptable lifestyle. Promiscuity w would probably be the issue, but not uh, a right or wrong on this particular issue. And as, as well, adultery is another factor, and, and there's another reference in Leviticus, because there's a covenant relationship between God and Israel. And that's what marriage is like, a covenant trusting relationship between a man and a woman. And so in the Old Testament it addresses when a man who's in a covenant relationship with a woman, a married, you know, a man who's married, goes and sleeps with someone from the gay community, that's seen as a violation of the covenant. So adultery You're saying only, and you know, only if he's married. Right, uh, okay. but it also, no, uh, homosexuality, as I said, within the uh, Old Testament is seen as, is, as wrong. And again, the story, one other thing. But I wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Romans is not in the Old Testament. Right, it's in the New Testament, but Paul, who wrote Romans, is of the Jewish uh, faith and comes from that tradition. Well, we could go to And first throughout Timothy. Romans, it refers to it. Let's again, stay with Romans. Right. Yeah. Okay. And again, again, let's say Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, that story which is often accused of as have, referring to homosexuality. Okay, what we need to do, sure. Wayne, I don't mean to jump in, okay. but since it's not sure. the June and Wayne show, we're, need, we're <laughs> going to need to take a break, and then I'm going to need to get everybody else's Great. slant and or viewpoint, and then we've got to throw it open to the audience. We're back. Now, when we went out, we were talking with Wayne Christensen, uh, and in particular about Romans, and um, I think Reverend Professor Dr. Martin, what, you know, he's got titles galore. Uh, you wanted to uh, comment on Romans. Yeah, what Wayne Christensen said, 
which is totally unknown in the history of Orthodox Judaism, Judaism as a whole in the Old Testament. He cannot cite one commentator, he cannot cite one uh, Talmudic scholar, he cannot cite one Jew in the history of Judaism that will sustain his interpretations. Secondly, that is true of Orthodox Christianity. None of the scholars of the Christian Church from the apostles, the disciples of the apostles, the church fathers and the reformers ever held that kind of a position. This is a position which developed in defense of homosexuality. It did not exist in the Christian church until then. Now I'd like to ask him a question in reference to Romans 1. What does parafusen mean? Parafusen? Uh, well, you went Greek to seminary, term? you right. took Greek, right? I did, uh, and I know enough Greek that I can refer to the commentaries that are available. I mean, I didn't find... You would refer to Arnton Gingrich, wouldn't you? Pardon me? You would refer to Arnton Gingrich sure. as the top scholars, right? Right. I've, they yeah. claim that parafusen means against the natural. Okay. All right? Sure. Which against Paul is speaking against. Right? Right, fine. But Anything let, that's out of the natural order let's of Let's take... Uh, right. right. Now, would you tell me in Leviticus 18, which was cited before, in conjunction with Romans 1, is it natural to have sex with animals? Uh, listen, I, that's not the issue I'm no, dealing I, I wanna, with. I want to I I yeah. bring us into the sure. focus of what's natural. Is it natural for a man or woman to have, se I'm talking to him now, have sex with an animal? I can jump in. Is that true? Well, I, you, I would say, excuse listen, me, but I, I, I would, if uh, Wayne is stymied and doesn't have an answer, I would say, health, excuse me. I, I'd see some significant health uh, qu problems in that. But you I, do? I think, you know. Would you think it's natural? It is if you're it's an animal. Yeah. Wait, wait. Okay, just let me finish okay. it with him, okay? Wait a second. I'll wait a second, you, Reverend Martin. Uh, Wayne doesn't seem to have a quick answer, not cutting you down. But Brad yeah. Anderson seems to want to I answer. I just want so. a simple yes or no. Well, Dr. Martin, it is natural for an animal to have sex with an animal. He didn't and ask that. What the word I natural, what is natural to you, is natural to you. And in my opinion, which I feel I have a right to, I have the right to determine what is natural for me. Mm -hmm. Just like I do not okay. have the right to determine what is natural okay. for you. Right. Like Brad, are you, you, are, you are a reverend. Yes, I am. Are you gay? Yes, I am. Okay. I'd like to comment on this in that also being a pastor and coming out of homosexuality as a Christian, I face that real issue. What is natural for me? I have homosexual feelings. Is this the course I am to walk as a result of my feelings? But there, you cannot just simply look at, at, at one's own experience. You have to go back to God's created order. Man is male and female. And when we look, I think these other scriptures... Wait, wait, wait. These, up, these other scriptures, these other scriptures have to be subordinated to the creation account, which is God's clear encounter of his intent for our humanity, and that is the basis for our intent. My fallen experience as a homosexual cannot be the basis for me in turn saying, this is God's intent for me. God must show me that. Okay, I, I, uh, okay wait a minute. I'm I, going to come back to you, Brad, but in fairness now, the I, Reverend I, Martin started it. Go ahead. I hate to keep belaboring this Sorry. point, but is it natural for man to have sex with animals? I, not for me. Yeah, and Perhaps it there, is for I you. Mean, You'd say no, right? Right, okay. Okay. What would, in the case of uh, the natural, when Paul uses it in Romans chapter 1, he is very explicit. You didn't comment on that. You very carefully avoided it. Oh, I God think gave, read from 117 through to God gave, now. Yeah, God gave him over to degrading passions. Right. Their women exchanged the natural, the natural function, fusen, for that which is unnatural. Now, what did the women do? they started practicing lesbianism or homosexuality. Again, in the same way also, the men abandon the natural function of the woman. The natural function of the woman is a heterosexual relationship. The unnatural is homosexual. There is no way in that passage in the Greek that you're going to answer it. Now cite so me this one... this justifies the discrimination right. of... Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Right? Cite me one authority. We're talking theology now. Cite me one authority. Right. Theology doesn't mean diddly to me until, oh, unless, now excuse we got to me, it. that's okay. right, until it affects how I act in my life. Yes. Yes. I am here because of my work with folks with AIDS. I'm a straight man. I have witnessed the hatred directed towards the gay community, and I am appalled by it. When I was in seminary, we did not discuss these things about well, wait homosexuality. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you're saying, wait so, a minute, you're God. saying Theology's theology doesn't mean, doesn't mean a thing to you, doesn't mean diddly to you, to quote, until it affects you? In other words, no. is it a convenience thing for I'm you or what? I'm not going to throw Bible verses back and forth in a sense of uh, attack. I, the Bible teaches well, me wait, 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 whoa, 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 okay. whoa. I'm not asking sure. anybody to throw scriptures back and forth. Well, I'm asking, wait a minute, no, I'm asking for everyone to give their interpretation sure. of the same. Yes. 
as I said when we went out on the first break, yeah. we will come up with a lot of opinions sure. today and hopefully some answers. I think right. we're going to get some answers too from the studio audience and their opinions. But it's not throwing scriptures back and forth. Right. It's let's, let's address ourselves too. The reason that we have religion is because we have the Bible. The Bible is at the message to us. You can shake your head right. all you want. That's my opinion. Yeah, I understand. That's my right. humble okay. opinion. Okay. So if you if you can't address that, then I'm going to defer to okay. people well, that will. No, yeah, I mean, we're surely, not getting I can address. address we're not accounts. getting any addressing yeah. of the subject. We're just getting okay. a statement uh, uh, that inferring that I'm attacking homosexuals. I'm not. Well, that was a question. No, is that I'm not attacking homosexuals. Wait a second. I am attacking your fractured exegesis of the scripture with no scholarship, whatever. All right, gentlemen, uh, I'll come back. I, I have someone here. Go ahead. I'll hold the mic because you look like you're going to eat it. Okay? <laughs> I was wondering about um, what you had said about... What you? Which one now? Which Brad? person are you? Brad. Brad. Brad, I'm sorry. Yes. Brad, you had mentioned earlier that if it was natural for a man to have sex with another man, mm -hmm. that it was basically okay because it was your nature. Mm -hmm. Well, it says in the Bible that sin is our nature. Mm -hmm. And it says that our heart is um, wicked and deceitful. Mm -hmm. And who but I know it but the Lord. So what you're saying right there is it's okay to do what is natural to me, but that is not true because okay. what is natural to me is I am born into sin. All right. And is yeah. that an interpretation okay. too of what was it, when did it start? 60s, 70s, 80s of if it feels good, do it? Oh yeah, right. And believe no, me, I am, not, I am not, I am not an advocate of that. I agree. It is a sin for a man who has a natural tendency to lie in bed with a woman to lie in bed with a man. Oh, okay, I okay, got that is sin. Yeah. Wait, wait, because you are we need to take a break. Wait, 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 okay. Brad. Okay, I promise. I'm going to come back to everybody. Now, wait a minute. But we need to take a break. Okay. And let me just real quick say that you're saying then if it's natural for a person to be straight and or heterosexual, it yes. is a sin then if they go with a, yes. a gay person. Yes, as I understand. Scripture. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, when we went out on break, Brad, I think the statement was made that in in um, is it natural for a man to have sex with an animal and you said if it's not natural for you but if it's natural it's what did you say okay I think we were discussing that if it is natural for a man to have sex with a man then that is natural and it is the original my, was an animal okay but was it got, not okay okay we never got around to a man with an animal. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. You had nothing to do with it. I was trying to get an analogy in of what is natural and what is unnatural. We still haven't got that answer. So what we were doing is we were using that as an analogy. Okay, you had a comment. Hopefully. I have a comment for Brad here. Yes. I think all of us are in this place right now. We all believe in Jesus Christ and we yes. all love him very much. Praise God. But you got to remember something, too, that when God created Adam and Adam was along and he gave Eve to Adam, he didn't bring a male partner to that person. But right? God brought one to well, me. Wait a minute, though. Yes. And he didn't say, now, if you get tired of this partner, go out and get a spare tire, which would be another, so I'm not using, like, I shouldn't say spare tire, another mate, or with an animal. Mm -hmm. That person has to be with that person till death. Mm -hmm. Right? You agree with that? Now, yes. if you love the Lord and you really want to walk the Lord, don't you think we should abide by his laws? Oh, yes. Well, what you're and saying that, right now, well, I want to do what's best for me. I don't want to include the Lord okay. into what he has to say. But I think it's, we have to really follow the Lord and just really understand okay. where he's coming from and really accept him the way the right way should be. That's all I want to say. Okay. Thank you. And Doc. Go ahead. Uh, Reverend, we're, yeah. we're going to, we're, let, let me just tell you ahead of time. We're running out of time. We have about a minute left. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue the topic tomorrow for all you people out there that don't feel they've gotten any answers yet. We may not tomorrow either. But I promise we're going to come back and we're going to pursue this. So we will go out with your response. Go ahead. I'm just going to say that in the context of Romans 1, which Wayne mentioned before, it's the context of creation and God abandoning man because he perverted the creation. It has nothing to do with your nature and my nature. Okay. It has to do with to do nature with as God ordained it. Let's and follow up with that thought tomorrow. I'll review for you. In the meantime, thank you for being with us today. We'll see you tomorrow, and guess what? You better tune in. You'll find out what's right, what's wrong, if there is a right and wrong. Bye. Now stay tuned for drama and intrigue on The Bold Ones, next on KDOC TV 56. Yesterday, as today, well, today as yesterday is the way I should put it, we will be discussing homosexuality and religion. And for the people that were not tuned in yesterday, shame, 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 you'll have no idea what you missed. And for those of you who are new viewers, I'm going to tell you who our guests are to discuss the topic 
homosexuality and religion. And what we say is some people say that if you're gay, you cannot be religious or truly religious according to Christianity, okay? And with us to discuss that are, first, Wayne Christensen, a Protestant minister on the staff at Cedar sinai Next is Brad Anderson with the First Metro Community Church in West Hollywood. And if you don't mind my telling everyone, he is a gay reverend. So we're going to get some real answers from him. Then we have the Reverend Andy Comiskey with Desert Stream, a who used to be gay. Is People that better than saying before? Homosexuality into Jesus. Okay. And then finally, we have, um, as he is labeled on the radio, the answer man with us, and that's Professor Walter Martin. He is a radio evangelist. He has a ministry, and he's also a doctor and a professor. We left yesterday. We had discussed Romans 1. We left yesterday with um, the issue and or uh, the answer huh, hanging in the air. Is it normal for man to be with man? Or and the analogy that the Reverend Martin wanted to get from us was, is it normal? Is it right? Is it an abomination for a human being to have sex with an animal? What I'm going to do, since we left with you people yesterday, is have this gentleman stand up. This is Reverend Raul Reese. Did I say it right? Okay. And you are also a minister? And you're with what church? Uh, Calvary Chapel of West Covina. Okay. Now, you had some things that you wanted to comment well, on. Well, I was just going to share that uh, historically speaking, even going back to the Egyptians or even Socrates and uh, Plato and Alexander the Great practicing homosexuality. And looking back in history, it's not what men can tell me, it's what God's Word says, that, that, that homosexuality is sin. And the choice you make is yourself because you have a choice to reject or to accept it. And uh, as far as biblically speaking, the Bible speaks against it, like Dr. Walter Martin said. Uh, you have to know the language. If you study the language, you study it and you see that it forbids it, Levitical law or not. The Word of God is God's Word, and uh, I think the choice that you take is your own choice. And uh, we think it's hot here, now wait till you find out later on it's going to get hotter if you don't <laughs> turn around and, and share the truth of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who wants to comment on that? I'd be glad to. Right. I, okay. I believe in the law of love. And I believe yeah. that if Jesus taught anything, it was love. I wish Christianity would come back to loving instead wait of... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I have a question. I have a question. I have a yeah. question. I have a question. Do you not believe that God loves sinners? Oh, I do believe God okay. loves sinners. Then what are you saying? You're saying that Christians don't love gays? I mean, I thought that if you were a tr true Christian, you did love everyone, even love a murderer because you're going to be dealt I with, I mean, if you believe in this philosophy and the doctrine, I you're going to be judged. I was a murderer, so God forgive me for my well, sin. I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I, I, believe, I believe God forgives, and I believe in the compassion of Jesus Christ, but I also believe in repentance. Mm -hmm. okay. I believe to repent. <laughs> okay, now, Brad, finish that. Thank you. I come from a fundamental faith, Church of Christ. I was raised in it until I was 20. To this day, my family and I have been annihilated for eight years because of the judgmental, fundamental faith of that church. But Brad, that is, is that not, because there's... That is not of a love of God, and it's not of a love of Jesus. It's of a love of a church and a church's doctrine. Okay. I think we have to get something very clear here. At the beginning of the program, you said, introducing it, about fundamentalists who said uh, that gays couldn't be religious and uh, people, gays, who said that they could be. Uh, well, they were they're to burn in hell for their heathen yeah, ways. Well, let, 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 let's get this straight, okay? Catholics, Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Reformed denominations, uh, Judaism, all are opposed to homosexuality. Islam is opposed to homosexuality. The whole point is, it makes it look, in this presentation, as if the gays are being ganged up on. Oh no, we love gays because Christ died for them. Okay. But we hate what God says is an abomination. Hold it, we'll be back. Okay, as soon as the Reverend uh, commented, all hands went up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go first to you, Andy. All right. Go ahead. Right. I wanted to mention the verses that we were talking about are all in the context of salvation, the prohibition of homosexuality so that the homosexual can enter into the fullness of what Jesus has for him. 
the homosexual has to admit that he cannot know himself outside of that relationship and through that relationship he is able to be free of homosexuality and to enter into the fullness of what Christ has for him. The purpose is not a mere prohibition. The purpose is a direction into wholeness and salvation which Jesus offers. And we have to consider that always. The church has been amiss in pointing out the prohibition of homosexuality without being able to minister or willing to minister the healing for the homosexual. What ministers have to understand, what Christians have to understand, is that the biggest homosexual problem is in their own church. It doesn't lie out in West Hollywood. It's within their members that need to be brought into the fullness of Christian community and redemption. Okay, you're and that is an exhortation for us as Christians, not to point at the bad pro-gay folks out there, but to look within our own ranks and say, where are the broken who need Jesus in this area in their own life? That is our first call as Christians. Just okay. hold one second because this young man had a comment and what was yours? Okay, my comment is that with 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, there's a verse, okay, there, there's a verse that comes right after it. It says, nor thieves, nor covetors, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. Those people will not inherit the kingdom of God either. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says they will not inherit the kingdom of God mm -hmm. along with homosexuality. No, okay. Wait a minute, please. Okay. What I'm saying is that there's no difference between thievery or drunkard or homosexuality. Sin is sin. Right. Mm -hmm. And those that practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. They're going to go to hell. In other words, they will not have life eternal. When they leave mortality, that's it. That's right. Sure. I uh, hope that we in the church can look to the verses in the Bible that teach us about love. Jesus created a community of people that care about one another, that enter into the suffering of other people. Jesus, whenever he saw lepers, the people ostracized by society, went out mm -hmm. to deal with them. So I hope that in the church we can get past our homophobia. Within my own tradition, the, within the Lutheran Church, we don't ordain openly gay people while we also profess the priesthood of all believers. How can we believe that they are what gay What about Lutherans? obedience oh, I, and oh, judgment in the Word of God? Okay, I accord with all of those, and I feel it's God's judgment, let's say in the AIDS crisis, that we You're not respond with love. You're twisting the Word of God just to go with, with your lifestyle. Okay. Pardon? No. no, wait a minute. She said you're twisting the Word of God to go with your lifestyle. Are you gay? No, I'm okay. straight as an arrow. Okay. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna <laughs> but I don't like to see the hatred directed towards gay people when people think this. I'm gay. I, okay, because well, because I, I, think, I think you have a valid point in that the majority of people in America have a cultural aversion. Amen. It is not a spiritual right. conviction. It is a cultural aversion. You, now, God prohibits homosexuality in the scripture. But we must, those who come out of straight backgrounds, must clear your hearts of your hatred and condemnation, which is cultural and not spiritual, so that you can be agents of redemption to bring the homosexual into wholeness. Brad, I don't think I'm trying to pick on you because I want to no, help everybody please. here because we're all here to help each other. Yes. Right. And Jesus said, when you talk about me, you know, do it in love and not with anger. Right. Okay, I hope everyone understands that. Because okay. when I leave here today, and I want you to understand this, everybody else said, what I learned at Calvary Chapel through my pastor and else, because he's one of my teachers, mm -hmm. and if I didn't have this word, I wouldn't be able to talk this way to you in the Holy Spirit. Now, you said you read the Bible. You didn't see anything there that you would conflict with you would understand, right? Well, I read the Bible a lot of times, too, when I was out in the world, and I didn't understand nothing at all. Mm -hmm. When I accepted the Lord, I understood everything exactly what he was saying in that book. You mean when you were of the world rather than in the world? Uh, right. But, but yeah. the thing is, what I'm going to say, though, is that you can read that Bible and say you're a Christian and do everything what you want to do, but you're not going to understand it. Okay, okay. may I, may so I respond? I will... First of all, to, to the sister over here, thank you for your comment, okay? I came from a very judgmental background, as I said, and I was very geared towards saving the lost. And one night, God showed me a scripture, the words of my Savior, that said, because the words are those of my Savior. I said, how do you know that was Jehovah God showing you okay, that scripture? Because the words are those of my Savior, and I don't think you'll disagree with that with me. Christ looked to the multitude and said, Judge not, lest you be judged. Lest you be judged. And Christ brought, they brought a harlot before him. What do you say we do to her? And Jesus looked to the multitudes. I looked to the multitudes. And in his words, I say, those of you without sin, please cast the first stone. But did she have an opportunity? No did she have an opportunity yeah. Yeah. for repentance? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Of a sin. What? what okay. okay. Go and sin, but didn't. But what right. I'm didn't, saying it, is. Wasn't that followed with. All of you. Wait, wait, wait. Was that not followed with go and sin no more? Yes. So because. you're only taking it so far. Well, may I talk? Okay. But wait a minute, wait a minute. That's what we're saying here. You're only taking it so far, and I think no, what we need I'll to be careful. Wait a minute, wait a minute. My turn. What we need to be careful of is interpretation to fit 
our conveniences. Yes, okay? I agree. And you do what you want to do, but you answer for it according to the laws laid down by that book that everyone here seems to have read. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder about interpretations of that same book. Is that right? Yes. Uh, okay. But you got to finish a whole thought. I mean, uh, you can't just take it so I far. Well, I would, except I got cut off. Okay. Wait, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I just want to uh, mention to Brad, you, you, you said the fact that you did what come naturally well. I did what came natural to me before I was a Christian, to follow the flesh, sex, drugs, and all the other idolatries. But it wasn't until I was truly born again that you're turning away from what comes natural. Okay. May I share with everyone, Jim? I was... I had... Okay, wait a minute. Now, in fairness, let's go to... Get out of there. <laughs> That's it. He's big. I'm not going to argue with him. Let's go now to um, Walter Martin because I can't stay on the one side. Okay. Yeah, uh, personal anecdotes and everything are fine. I'm not opposed to that. I would like to, however, get back to something we seem to be avoiding on a regular basis, which happens to be what the text says. Well, this is what now, I said, oh, according good. to now, the I like Bible to get and to, I like to get what the text says. I teach biblical interpretation. I'm a professor of hermeneutics. Uh, when you interpret the scriptures, you just don't open the thing up, grab the verse out of its context, and Amen. say, that's what it says. Amen. Now, before, what we got was 1 Corinthians 6 pulled out, two Greek words thrown at us, and that was assumed that that answered the question. It doesn't answer the question. All the commentators, all the scholars on the subject, the Greek authorities, which you're not, all tell you you're wrong. Just number again, one. When I show up in heaven, now, God's let's not let's give get me a great let's test. get it straight. Let's right, get just it straight. Say, did you love my people? Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me ask you a question. Since theology means diddly to you anyhow. Is that what I said? You said that. I it continued yeah. to say yeah. why bother unless it? it affects some change in my life. Yeah. These words well, are why, do, why not mean why not, something in my life. Why, that, why talk all the time about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ when you don't talk about the judgment of Christ? Yeah. 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 Let me finish. Let me finish on this point, okay? This is Jesus Christ dealing with false teachers, false prophets, and perverters of the Word of God, you generation of slimy snakes who warned you to flee from a damnation of hell. Invisible graves over whom men walk, blind leaders of the blind. That's Jesus Christ, too. What are you going to do with him there? Well, right now, the verse is about they will hate you and mock you and persecute you. What do you do with words? those verses? That's right. Well, uh, what do I do with the verses that you put towards Where me? Where Jesus uh, judges. What are you going to do with that? He's addressing to the Pharisees and what he saw in uh, the religious hierarchy there as pharisaical... Uh, Perversions uh, of the scripture, right? right? Okay. That's, that's what it. you guys the are doing, that's perverting the scripture. Hold your thought. This gentleman's been standing a while and then I'll come to you. Sure. Uh, to Brad and Wayne, uh, yes, sure. it seems pretty clear that Jesus did teach love, of course. I think everybody in here would agree to that. However, love does not mean the absence of judgment. Jesus also taught judgment. Right. So therefore, you're defining love in such a way that anybody who denounces sin is somehow unloving. No. When in fact, denouncing your sin that can send you to hell is a very loving act. No. Let me say that here we have a classic example of someone's morality dictating their theology. You're finding biblical sense? text to back up the way you choose to practice. You're not starting with scripture, the revealed word of God. You're starting with your experience and your desires and trying to use that and then find a Bible text to justify it. I think it should be the other way around. Start with Scripture. All right, I said when we came back we were going to go to you, Wayne. I'm going to change that because this gentleman needs to say something, and we're running out of time again, unfortunately. Oh, thank you. I came out of the homosexual lifestyle five years ago, and so I can deeply appreciate when you're talking about love, because I do hate when people start yelling at you, and a lot of it is cultural. You know, and I do feel bad, and that's why, you know, love is an important issue, but also obeying scripture is, and I do understand the Greek, and the Greek is malakoi and arsenokoitis. One was correct, it is male prostitute, but the other is homosexual offenders, by all the best, uh, you know, people that, you know, they're the experts. So anyway, but love is the issue, and it's not love not to tell somebody the truth, and Jesus, the whole scripture has absolutely pointed out that if you live in this sin, or any sin that God's pointed out, which only destroys you, eventually it hurts you. And that's why God doesn't want us to do it. It'll hurt us. That you will go to hell. And that letter, by the way, in Corinthians, was written to Christian believers by St. Paul. And warning them, if you live like this, you will go to hell. And it was written to believers. And um, so like I said, I think it, it boils down to me. Like I had a debate once with an MCC pastor. And it boils down to basically, do you love Jesus more than your sexual enjoyment? Mm -hmm. I love Jesus more, so I gave up sin. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, we're going to have to say goodbye and come back tomorrow, but go ahead. We'll go out with your comment. To you is that you, you can come into that wholeness that Jesus wants. There is a healing movement going on that are bringing people into heterosexuality out of homosexuality. So in the event that, that okay, in the event that we go out, I have to say Wayne, Brad, Andy, uh, Reverend Martin, I want, and Professor Doctor, I want to thank you all for being with us. Go ahead, you can continue to talk. We ran out of time. We're going to come back and do more of this topic another day. Right, I promise. Yeah. Go ahead. Right.